We start the game off with the pretty boy himself, Cloud Strife. You know him, he's that Smash 4 character that got nerfed. He was also a first class soldier apparently. I still don't know what hair product he uses or how he can swing that big sword, but those are questions for another day. He's chilling with your boy Barrett, Biggs, this guy, and Jesse, Team Avalanche. They're gonna blow up this reactor because they're trying to save the planet from this great conglomerate, Shinra. As Shinra is using Mako, the blood of the planet, as energy. But wait, these aren't Cloud's friends. No, 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 no. He's only in it for the money. Make sure you remember that. He wants you to. This is a one-time gig. When it's done, we're done. So we fight this giant scorpion and manage to blow up the reactor. But oopsies, the explosion was too big and the city is destroyed. Oh no, it's okay. We're the good guys. We're allowed to do that. We decide to go home to Sector 7, but on the way, Cloud gets a headache and oh no, it's challenger number eight. But it turns out Cloud was just hallucinating and he moves on. Then Cloud finds Aerith. She tries to sell him a flower and she does, but she also curses him. And now he can see Dementors. Aerith decides to ditch us. How kind of her. We eventually do make it back to Sector 7 and we find none other than Tifa Lockhart. Let's go. Oh my god! She looks flawless! Yeah, people really like Tifa. She's a childhood friend of Cloud, and is also part of Avalanche. Cloud gives her the flower, because what else is he gonna do with it? But there's still a problem. He hasn't been paid yet! And guess what? They don't have Cloud's money. So we have to sell water filters and build connections to get our money. Anyway, Cloud goes to bed, but the big scary man comes and gets him. However, it turns out this guy was just called Marco or something. I swear Sephiroth is just bored and finds it funny to mess with Cloud. We do eventually get our full payment, but then Barrett kicks us from the cool kids club. Like, what the heck, man? Luckily, Jessie's whole personality is the fact that she likes Cloud, so she asks us to rob her house for her. Sure thing. On the way, we do a motorcycle fight with this maniac. His name is Roche, and he's honestly not that important to the story, so we're gonna move on. Cloud has this flashback about Tifa as well, and it really makes me question if his hair is just naturally spiky, or he's been using mad product his entire life. Either way, we accomplish our mission and return to base. Okay, I get it. Mind letting me breathe? Depends. Mind coming over tomorrow night? My roommates should all be out for a while. Are you seriously that desperate? Just let go already. Only if you promise to come back tomorrow night. Deal? <sighs> no promises, but I'll think it over. Really? You will? I'd make a mean pizza, I'll have you know. Marsh, Louche, Black Millie, Red Shelly? I use only the best ingredients. Does Jesse even know what a pizza is? The next day, there's a Dementor invasion, and Jesse breaks her ankle. So Cloud is back in the Cool Kids Club. Oh yeah. They decide to bomb another reactor, and it doesn't go well, because we gotta fight this thing. The Air Buster. At least the boss music is fire. We do beat the Airbuster, but Cloud falls into the abyss, while Bear and Tifa manage to escape. Somehow he survives, and when he wakes, hey, it's Aerith Gainsborough. She makes us her bodyguard, and we have to fight this guy, Reno. I don't like how fast he is, it made this fight way harder than it needed to be. Luckily, the Dementors pushed us to safety, and now I'm starting to wonder which side these guys are on. Cloud needs to get back to Sector 7, but we decide to stop at Sector 5, since that's where Aerith lives. <laughs> Tifa. Tifa? Is Tifa like your girlfriend? No. Hmm, but she's someone special. It's not like that. More like... I don't know how to explain. Next we fight this Turk. His name is Rude. And he just keeps swinging us around. It was mad annoying, but we do end up beating him. Well now it's time for Cloud to go, but Aerith insists she must come along. Her reasoning being, Because I'm not sick of you yet. <sighs> sure, Aerith. On her way to Sector 7, we find Tifa all dressed up in this carriage, and apparently she's going to visit Don Corneo, this very, very shady man. Tifa's entering a competition to become the next Mrs. Corneo, so she can interrogate the man and figure out his evil plans, and who he's working for. You know, classic antagonist stuff. Tifa convinces Cloud she'll be fine, but Aerith doesn't think so, because Don Corneo doesn't play by the rules. So now Cloud and Aerith must find a way to enter the competition themselves. They catch up with the carriage eventually, but Tifa is nowhere to be seen. This girl, what's she look like? She's in great shape. Is that really important? Wait a minute, you talking about Tifa? That's her. <laughs> 
Looks like someone's got a bit of a crush. We figure out we must speak with the trio to get recommended into the audition. One of them is Andrea Rodea, but he's too busy. The next is Chocobo Sam, but he's already nominated Tifa. So that leaves us with the hand masseuse, Madam M. She tells us she can nominate Aerith, but we have to win this underground battle tournament for prize money to buy Aerith a dress. Okay, we fight a literal burning house, and Aerith gets her dress. However, Cloud is very jealous, and he wants a dress of his own. Lucky for him, Andrea Rodea is now interested in him after seeing him fight. So we go back to the Honey Bee Inn for a dance off? It turns out Cloud has the schmoofs, so he gets his pretty dress. Now it's time for Don Corneo. We go in and we find Tifa. Wait a minute. <gasps> Cloud? Is that you? Oh my god, that makeup and that dress. Nailed it, I know, thank you, moving on. So now Don Corneo needs to choose his bride, and he chooses none other than our boy Cloud. And who can blame him? Oh, you're even cuter than I thought. Back off. Ooh! <laughs> this kitten's got claws! I love it! <laughs> Tifa and Aerith beat up Corneo's lackeys, and we get our gear back from this guy, Leslie. Now, he was one of the guards earlier, so whose team is this guy on? Tifa and Aerith save the damsel in distress, that is Cloud. And we make Corneo fess up. Some things are better left unsaid, you know? See, I'm not so sure they are. Better keep talking. Or I'll smash them. <laughs> but uh-oh, looks like Shinra, the corporation, is gonna drop an entire plate on Sector 7 just to destroy Avalanche. We try to leave to warn the people of Sector 7, but we fall for the oldest trick in the book. Into the sewers we go. Luckily, we don't take fall damage in this game, so we're doing alright. I didn't want to drag Aerith into all this. She'll understand. How do you two know each other? I saved her. She saved me. Round and round it goes. And that's all there is to it. Sure there isn't something else going on? Mm. Frick, she's on to us. We fight this beast named Abzu, but he gets scared and runs away before we can beat him. I'm sure he won't come back as a boss fight later. We make our way through the sewers, and then we find this ghost area? Weird stuff. In said ghost area, we fight ghosts. Who would have guessed? And you can go to hell! Tifa kind of wrecks them. We finally make it back to Sector 7, but it looks like the Turks from earlier, Reno and Rude, are already trying to drop the plate by attacking the support pillar. Our avalanche buddies are trying to shoot the helicopters with their baby pistols, and it doesn't go well. Wedge almost dies, Biggs dies, and so does Jesse. I really wanted to believe we could. Yeah. You owe me a pizza. Tifa needs to help us out, so she asks Aerith to rescue Marlene, Barrett's daughter, from the bar. Aerith manages to find Marlene, but not before being captured by this guy named Sam. In the meantime, Cloud, Barrett, and Tifa are fighting off Reno and Rude, but they still manage to drop the plate. We somehow manage to escape in this cutscene that looks better than a lot of movies I've seen, but the Sector 7 slums are pretty not okay. Oh hey, it's Sephiroth, and yet again, only Cloud can see him. So he looks kinda silly just standing there shaking in his boots with nothing in front of him. We decide to go to Aerith's house to check in with Aerith's mom, and see if Marlene is okay. Luckily, she is. Aerith's mom tells us that Aerith is an ancient, the last alive. Now this doesn't mean she's a billion years old. It means she has unique powers that the bad people want access to. We head back to Sector 7 to look at the carnage, and yeah, the bar is still destroyed. Don't know what y'all were expecting. But we do find one of Wedge's cats, and we decide to follow it back into the sewers. What fun! We find our boy Wedge, and apparently he's still alive. We take Wedge back to Aerith's house, and we spend the night there. However, Cloud can't sleep, so he goes outside. Now here you get one of three cuts scenes, one with Tifa, Aerith, or Barrett. I got the Tifa scene, and she's really not doing too well after her home was destroyed, and Cloud is really not good at comforting her. Okay, does Cloud not know what a hug is or something? Look at this clown just standing there! Okay, thank god he figured it out. I'm so proud of you, buddy. Keep up the good work. Cloud, you're hurting me. 
Never mind, still a clown. The next day, we decide we want to go back to our favorite character, Don Corneo. But when we arrive, no one's home. But we do find this guy, Leslie. He tells us that Don Corneo stole his fiance and he wants revenge, so I guess he's on our side now. We find the Don, but stupid Leslie forgets how to pull a trigger and he escapes. And oh yeah, remember that Abzu guy from earlier? He's back. We fight him, but Don Corneo is long gone. We return to the surface and Leslie gives us grappling guns, so now we can make our way up to where Aerith is being held captive. We make our way through the carnage to rescue Aerith, but we find a guardian skywatcher along the way. Seriously, these are the exact same thing. We beat it, but the ground is rather unstable and we almost die. Thankfully, the grappling guns come in very clutch. We get this dope cutscene with everyone trying to shoot their grappling hooks to save each other. Sometimes I forget this is a video game and not a freaking Marvel movie. We make it into Shinra HQ, and now it's time to figure out how to get to the top floor, where Aerith is supposed to be. Tifa does some parkour to get the key card, but then we decide to climb 59 floors. I'm sure our friends are very stoked about this. Maybe we should take a quick break. Come on, Barrett. You can stop if you want. You can even say it's for me. Just say you can't hack it. I'll hack you, jackass! We managed to find the mayor along the way, and he's actually working with us and helps us get up a few more floors. He's a bit full of himself, though. The countersign is... The mayor is the best! Midgar's mayor is nothing less! Uh. Everyone says he's cooler than the rest! Uh. <sighs> we slowly but surely make our way up the floors, and we find Professor Hojo. I gotta say, I don't like this guy. I don't think anyone does. He's captured Aerith, and he plans to use her power to find the Promised Lands or something. We try to take him down, but he releases a beast for us to fight, so he gets away. I'm starting to see a pattern here. Eventually, we do free Aerith, but we also free this other creature who's being held captive as well. He's a bit hostile at first, but Aerith touches his head, and now he's cool with us. A fascinating question. Oh. <laughs> Did it just talk? Oh yeah, he can talk. His name is Red13, and he's our friend now. Since there isn't much game left, he isn't playable, but most likely will be in the sequel. We then try to escape the Shinra HQ by getting to the roof, where there's supposed to be an avalanche helicopter, but Cloud gets a migraine and Sephiroth is back. And the thing is, everyone can see him this time. Cloud really isn't having a good time, but he goes for his signature move forward aerial. And you guessed it, it doesn't freaking work. Now we have to traverse this area with our party members separated before we can leave the Shin Rage queue. We eventually get the gang back together after a pretty uneventful chapter 17. It's a lot of Cloud and Tifa talking on the phone and flipping switches and whatnot. Now that the band is back together, we resume our climb to the roof and make it to the top floor, the president's office. The weird thing is, we find him just casually hanging off the edge of a building. Like seriously, the game doesn't explain how we got here, he's just there. He asks us to help him, and Barrett really doesn't want to, but he figures he can intimidate him into owning up to dropping the plate, and to stop spreading lies about Avalanche. Barrett wants that good publicity, you know? The president is quite scared at first, but somehow he gets his hands on a gun and is about to shoot Barrett, but before he can do anything, he gets stabbed by the Masamune. Barrett tries to shoot Sephiroth, but is also stabbed. Sephiroth then goes to summon a giant tentacle monster for us to fight, but we defeat it fairly easily. Cloud is about to go after Sephiroth, Sephiroth, but then we realize that Baird is alive! It turns out the Dementors, or Whispers, can do that if it's not part of their desired destiny. <laughs> they straight up don't play by the rules. Our squad moves outside, but at this point Sephiroth has escaped. We try to escape on our helicopter, but it gets sniped by Shinra. Inside is none other than Rufus Shinra. That last name seems kind of familiar. Cloud stays to fight while he lets Tifa, Aerith, and Barrett escape. Now it's just the two of them, Cloud and Rufus. Actually, never mind. Rufus brought his dog to the fight. After we defeat his dog, we learn that Rufus is mad obsessed with coins and somehow uses them to attack. Talk about wasting money. We do end up defeating Rufus, but he escapes on his helicopter, shoots at Cloud, and now we're pretty screwed. Cloud can't pull himself back up, because he's only got one arm to work with, as the other's holding on to the comically large buster sword. So he's not getting anywhere. Just as he's about to let go, Tifa runs back and saves him. Now this is super hype. But how the hell are either of them getting back up? Meanwhile, Barrett, Aerith, and Red 13 are fighting a robot. But once they defeat it, Mr. Heidegger and his soldiers show up. Now they're in a bit of a sticky situation, but Cloud shows up in his motorcycle and he kinda just runs them over. Tifa also has a sick new ride that being paint job tow mater. And we finally bust out of the Shinra building. We hit the road on our sick new rides, but Shinra's still onto us and they try to take us down. Fortunately, my man Cloud is a master on the motorcycle and they don't cause us too much trouble. We then get a little flashback and it's none other than Zack Fair. Hey Zack, where are you from? Me? Gungaga. Zack is a first class soldier and he's in a bit of trouble. I hope nothing bad happens to him.
Oh hey, it's Sephiroth. We return back to reality and Sephiroth opens up a portal and ditches us. As expected, we follow him into the portal. On the other side, it looks roughly the same until they see the giant purple thing in the sky. Apparently this is a giant whisper, you know, the Dementor things. To defeat the giant whisper, we need to take down three different smaller whispers it creates. These ones are colorful. We do exactly that and then we get separated again. And just as we get separated, Sephiroth shows up and it's time for the final battle. Cloud is kinda getting his butt kicked, but Tifa shows up to save him. Then Sephiroth starts cheating, but Aerith shows up, and she has Game Shark. Easy claps. Cloud goes for the final blow, but Sephiroth says, nah man, I don't feel like losing. And we get teleported to what Sephiroth calls the Edge of Creation. Sephiroth starts getting super cryptic, and he also asks Cloud to join him, but that's not gonna happen. They have a nice little face-off with some pretty good fight choreography, but Cloud loses. Sephiroth doesn't kill him. He just warns Cloud that he has seven seconds till the end. What a nice guy, giving us a heads up like that. The game transitions to show us people rebuilding Sector 7, and also that Biggs is alive. That's nice. We also learn that Zack is alive? I have no clue how he didn't get hit by a single bullet with all those soldiers, but I guess they just have really bad aim. We then see our heroes one final time, and they agree that their mission is to defeat Sephiroth big surprise, and then we cut to credits. Now this is only a small fraction of the original Final Fantasy VII story. Square Enix will be making at least two more sequels to this remake to fully complete the plot, and I gotta say, I'm pretty excited to see where they'll go with it. This is clearly going to be a different story, with the inclusion of the Whispers and a Sephiroth fight happening when it shouldn't. I do think it's more fun to speculate while we wait for the next game, rather than wait for the same story we already know to be remade. But that's all we have for now. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video, it was a lot of fun to put together. If you did like this video, please let me know in the comments. I'd be down to do this format of video again with different games if people want to see it. As always, thanks for making it to the ends. I really do appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.